Hey collectors, Anthony from Hashesnet here, and today we will be taking a look at Transformers Buzzworthy Bumblebee Legacy Creatures Collide Sky Wasp. Sky Wasp is a mistake brought upon this world in hopes of improving on the flawed design of Waspinator. Instead, the product has ended up with a prankster with a bad sense of humor. This will be one of two of my reviews on this box set, the other being Ransack. Moose will be covering Goldbug and Scorponok. When we get back, we will see what all the buzz is about. So before we get into the figure that we're going to talk about today, I wanted to real quickly show off the differences between the two versions of Goldbug that Hasbro has released this year. And uh, I know, Moose is going to do an in-depth review on this set's gold bug, which is the one to your left, but um, the one to your right is the shattered glass version, and it uses the cliff jumper mold. And you can see that the, the helmeting is similar, but the body is with the Netflix Bumblebee uh, VW uh, Beetle. So you can see the differences. The weapons are the same, the backs, uh, of course, the different ones because of the different molds. And here is what they look from this side profile. So here they are in vehicle form, and um, unlike Shattered Glass Goldbug, uh, the new Goldbug doesn't have a port on the top to mount the cannons. Uh, but I mean, generally, the build, the internal parts are the same. It's the shell that's different, so you can see the difference. Obviously, if you have a Bumblebee from Netflix, he's basically just a slightly different colored Goldbug uh, from the one on the left here. But, uh... Otherwise, there's not too much different about them, other than, of course, the licensing. And uh, just look out for Moose's review of Goldbug. You can see the transformation and other comparisons on this channel. And here we are. On the left, you have Sky Wasp. On the right, you have Waspinator. And before we get into these guys, let's uh, check out the box and just put them aside here. And the box is kind of big, and on the plus side, their initiative to reduce cardboard is pretty much, I guess, best I've seen so far. The cardboard, of course, is the length of the box inside. I'm not going to pull it out because there's no room for it, but uh, it's just basic cardboard, proper holding, uh, the uh, cardboard ties perfectly, no plastic. Great, well, except for the figures, they're plastic, obviously. Here's the front, uh, Gold Bug, Grand Sack, Sky Wasp, Scorponok. Of course, this is the Toy Color Scorponok. Uh, it, this... Um, uh, Sky Wasp, I guess, is, is some people say it paralyzes, or sometimes it says Parasite. I don't know. I don't know the uh, characters. Ransack, of course, is the second generation of Insecticon. And, of course, Goldbug. And uh, if, if you've watched the Transformers 86 movie, that's where Goldbug premieres. And then he lasts, like, barely season three before he gets turned back to Bumblebee. But anyway, uh, back of the box is this right here, showing the pictures of each of them. And uh, the top, of course, has the pictures of them. And then there's a lot of air holes, like fingers going. So they tried to reduce the cardboard as, as much as they could without basically making it easy for somebody to steal something, which I appreciate. But also in the box with the instructions also came um, an additional head for Skywasp here. So basically, it's the uh, alternate head that, for Waspinator for his uh, buzzsaw figure. And uh, and as usual, a set of instructions and some don't hurt yourself paper. So don't hurt yourself. So for comparison, they are, they are the same figure, recolored. I, I, I mean, classic Waspinator, you, you can't hate him. Uh, but uh, then we get to uh, Sky Wasp colors. And I, I, I don't know, I, I like the blood red against the purple with the black and and um, I want to say tan coloring. Of course, the eyes have texture. Uh, there's texturing on the thorax here and the back. It, it is, it is I, I just really appreciate the detail they've been putting into War for Cybertron and Legacy as far as texturing is concerned. Although lacking some paint maybe down here, it just seems a little plain in the purple parts. But maybe the purple parts aren't paint friendly, although they do have some paint up here, so I don't know. So anything I could say about him, I've said about him, and I've said about Buzzsaw, that all the same quality issues exist, and it's really only one. The waist just doesn't want to stay together. Uh, I, as you see, it, they're not even connected. You have that slide piece here, and um, it just doesn't want to slide in, and it doesn't want to stay. 
and as much as I try, uh, on occasion it'll stay and then just pop out, and uh, it just pops out, and you slide it in, and it pops out. It just it doesn't seem to lock into place. I feel like they could have done something just a little bit more to secure it, maybe against the back end here. Uh, I don't know. I don't design toys, but uh, that is just something that you think after three, at least three molds so far, that they would have figured out, but they have not. So let's uh, just quickly take a look. Um, obviously, they have the same weapon, which is the tail, the stinger, I guess, the tail gun, whatever you want to call it. Uh, everything else generally looks the same. Yeah, go to the side here, and um, yeah, again, nothing different. Arms. Uh, back here on the back side, same patterning, uh, same just general, like one color, another color, one color, another color. Uh, same waffling, continuing on, again the same. And even the head sculpts on the form that uh, you get out of box is the same. And as I said before, you could of course change it for that other buzzsaw head sculpt. I'm not. I think buzzsaw is appropriate for this head sculpt but I don't want it on him. And now my understanding is if you put this on Skywasp, he becomes Paralyzer or Parasite or whatever. I don't care. I think he looks cool the way he is. I think the colors work really well to be a better or supposedly better version of Waspinator. So I'm gonna throw Waspinator in the corner here and transform this guy. First things first, you take his butt cannon. I don't know. Uh, you just peg it in back here. Just put it where it needs to go right away. That way you don't have to worry about finding it later. Although I do like how flush it is. Um, the T30, or Thrilling 30's version, has like a legit stinger. I kind of wish they would have gone that little extra mile, but they didn't. So, yeah. So it's going to be a little bit of difficulty uh, showing a connection point in the center because it's black and black, or black and purple. So um, hopefully I can get the point across and you, you can go, oh, okay, that's how you transform it. So when I get to that point, I will try to explain it. And if you know what I'm talking about, great. If you don't, I will get to it. So first things first, uh, the feet fold up. So you will kind of want to do this. And uh, these will connect later together for our final bit here. We're going to pull the back off and uh, pull forward the waist here. I probably should have pulled forward the waist first, but it doesn't stay, so I'm so used to just not saying anything about it. So pull this out, and you get kind of like this split here. This is like the third time I've done this. Uh, I should have mentioned that the head is separated uh, when it's in bot form, but you can push it together. You can adjust the mandibles, because uh, they do come in and out. You can adjust the, the antenna. But uh, for this part here, we're going to... There's a peg here. I don't know how well you can see it. It goes into the back here put the head together. Now I'm going to tell you, uh, it's going to pop out at least once or twice while I'm doing this. It's just the way it is. Uh, arms you got to straighten up and uh, they're going to fill in the inside cavity here. Now this is where I, I was, some of the confusion of difficulty of color. You got to rotate the arms because you need these points to be inside and these points to be inside because these tabs down here are what mount into the black part here that is going to be super difficult to show. And hopefully I'm not going too fast for you. Uh, there, I mean, check out the Waspinator video if you want a better color, you know, uh, color version. But uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult to see on this guy. While I'm working on this, I'm going to flip his waist backwards. And it snaps into place neatly into the tail here. It's a pain to get out otherwise, but uh, snaps in the tail still. And you can see the color pattern kind of fills itself in. And we'll get to it. But um, you can pretty much push the legs down and see where we're going already. And uh, we're going to adjust the feet a little bit because we're going to get them here. So our goal right now is to get these arms attached. I don't know how well you can see the holes back here. The little pegs that are on the lower part of the hand, uh, you know, the wrist, I guess, will peg in there. And that's supposed to add some stability. Um, I, I feel like what I'm going to do is move the hands a little bit out of the way. And um, basically ensuring that this is kind of a flat line here. So it might be a little bit easier to peg in to the waist area and uh, okay got one pegged in and it will probably pop out but you know never hurts to try let's see it's really difficult to see with the dark colors uh, I could throw so much lighting at this 
but uh, can't guarantee it'll be good all the time. So finally got that in. Now I'm gonna hold these together like this. And um, while I'm doing that, I'm going to put the feet together because there's this peg here that goes into the other foot. Try to line these things up because I need these pieces to be lined up because they're gonna go here. And um, the waist is kind of just free right now while, as I do this because this is like legit the only connection point. So it looks like I have them lined up. So I'm going to try to slide this piece here into here and connect it and then shift the feet upwards to kind of fill in the front end here. And uh, looks like I kind of got it. Okay, there you go. So the legs, you can position them how you want. Uh, they seem fine here. Adjust the wings. And, uh, oh, and, and then yes, he might pop out. He just did. But uh, this is essentially what he looks like. And um, keep tweaking the legs here. There we go. So that's pretty good. It's, uh, it's easy enough transformation. And I think this actually looks pretty good. So let me get Waspinator transformed and we can see the comparison. So here they are both in their uh, alternate forms and um, you can see they're just simple recolors, nothing too different about them. Uh, I, I just, I, I appreciate the updated look and I think that uh, Legacy has been kicking it out of the park here on these uh, late end, basically War for Cybertron releases. I am just hoping to finish my Beast Wars and G1 collection by the end of Legacy, but we'll see how that goes. But uh, essentially that is the comparison between these two. All in all, neither of these guys are breaking any new ground. Of course, they're re-releases of other figures with different colors and slightly tweaked in some way. They're both good. They're both, for what they are, they are perfectly acceptable figures. And I guess the question is to you, and leave it in the comments, how many of these do you have? Like, how, do you have both uh, of Ransack and Kickback? And do you have Sky Wasp, Waspinator, Buzzsaw? Like, <laughs> uh, what about Scorponox? There's, there's like now like, like three or four Scorponox figures out there. There's like two different Volkswagen molds of Bumblebee, now Goldbug, and then there's another Goldbug, then there's another Bumblebee. Like, how many are there? How many do you have of all these repaints? Let me know. Thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.